and know that it's okay if you feel like pregnancy is kind of a shaky time for a lot of your relationships mm -hmm. because it's shaky in a way that that is really beautiful even though it's kind of scary as you're moving through it um, and this is something that I personally experienced mm -hmm. it's like the the relationships that that were really serving me even though I wasn't really consciously aware of it like really came to the forefront friends that I maybe usually didn't spend that much time with but but were really there for me and I always felt like lighter and more energized after I was with them versus like depleted and kind of feeling down on myself they just started to, to call more to show up more I would like see them at the grocery store randomly it, it was really interesting how they they just came into my space more and the friends who really weren't supportive and had kind of shown that in the past really started to show it when I became pregnant and and being a people pleaser usually if those people started to show that when it was just me I, I would like try to make it work and and try to like, ignore it but when I had this human in me and I was also like living for him in a way it's like we're not we're not putting up with this like if you don't support us and you don't make us feel good when we're around you I, I don't want to be I don't want to be around you and and again it didn't have to be this like crazy dramatic like breakup but you just I, I just would choose to not spend as much time with those people and <clears throat> I have a really wonderful family that supports me but something else that I noticed during this time was that <clears throat> there were some family members that I needed to not spend as much time with. I didn't cut ties, but just noticing that while I was in that really vulnerable space of pregnancy, I, I needed to I need to needed to be so careful with my space and my time and my heart. And I realized that it was it was so sacred and I really needed to to protect myself. Mm -hmm. Um and and that didn't mean I just shut myself away, but I just really would seek out the people that that would uplift me. And something interesting that happened during pregnancy, I realized that I didn't have a lot of girlfriends that I wanted to spend a lot of time with and that totally bummed me out and I didn't really have a plan for how I would change that. You didn't know I was coming. I out. didn't know Taryn was coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> but but after I had my son just in the next like really in the first 3 months of his life, my network of, of female friends grew exponentially and I and I didn't even really seek it out. I just started to meet new mothers and, and even women that didn't have a child but just were a really good match for me started to come into my life and and that I, I just like I had so much love for the universe at that point. It's like, oh you you like answered my my prayer, my whatever, like whatever I was requesting. That's you. the thing, is yeah. because you were requesting it. And that's so I that's was. what I really want to make clear is that like it is something that you have to set an intention for. I actually had it on a vision board. <laughs> I literally had strong women and then like mm -hmm. a mother with a baby on my vision board. Right. Because yeah. and that's kind of an extreme thing. You don't often make a vision board, but mm -hmm. having that like question to the universe, having that request of the universe right. and just saying, this is something that I am going to cultivate and then allowing that process to unfold. You have to, it is a give and receive. You have to request it. Well, and to get really clear on what you need from those women as well. And, and I started to do that. I, and you can even like, I know I love my list, but this is, this is an activity that you can do. You can First, maybe make a list of, of the women in your life and just start to think about what do what do I get from this relationship? And sometimes it'll be what what do I not get from this relationship or what do they give me that I actually don't want? And you can just start to brainstorm and write down traits, words, whatever comes to you. And, and then you can look at it and if you see some big hole, like, oh, I don't really have anybody that stokes my creativity or that I can talk to you about work in a really interesting way or whatever it is, you can kind of write down those traits and set the intention that you are going to attract women or, or friends, whomever, that, that will like stoke that fire mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. and, and if you get specific like that, then I think it makes it easier to know where to go mm -hmm. for those friends. For example, if it is like the creativity thing and you're an artist and you love to paint, but you don't really have somebody to connect to with that, you could go and take an art class. I mean, you, you, can, go at, you can go to those places where those type of people hang out and you can try to cultivate those relationships. So again, it doesn't have to be just like putting it out there. Mm -hmm. I think that is a, a very important aspect of it, putting out to the 
putting it out to the universe, asking for it, doing the vision board, but then also taking some actions to go and seek out those women. Like when I think about it now, I joined two different mom groups because I just, I feel, I felt like I had to connect to other mothers. We had a, a birth collective where other birth workers came together. That's how we met. Like, like talk about a passion. It's like, I need somebody mm -hmm. to talk to about all this work. And mm -hmm. people like Taryn came into my life. So, so you can, you can be really picky and choosy and write what you need and, and realize that you deserve that. You deserve people who, who will support you in that way. Yeah. And reach out. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I have really learned how to do over the years is just to say like, if there is a woman that I really want, I, and I'm speaking specifically about women because in this context, I think it's really important to have a group of women because what mm -hmm. we're experiencing is unique for us. Um, but that I'm not saying don't do this with men. It's fine. But, um, but I did learn over the years how to reach out to a woman that I was kind of drawn to. If I felt like she and I would connect really well, I did want to make those, those coffee dates. And, you know, we transitioned from birth collective mm -hmm. into friendship into colleagues into all sorts of things into family basically. And that's how it is. You build relationships. So if you're feeling, you know, especially postpartum, it's easy to feel isolated and you, you really, I really don't want you to feel isolated. That is something that I feel really strongly about. It does contribute to postpartum depression. It does contribute to postpartum anxiety if you have a feeling of isolation. Community support, feeling supported and not feeling isolated is a really important way to move out of those feelings of depression and anxiety. Right. Especially if they're on the milder side and it's not like a clinical level yet, um, getting it before it can kind of progress, mm -hmm. don't be isolated. <clears throat> Have that support. Reach out. Join mom groups. Join whatever. I As I have grown as a mother and I'm out of that immediate small baby time um, and I have been working more and more, a lot of my connections have come through work. I have mastermind groups. I have, I've joined women's classes. I do so mm -hmm. many different things. And all of those things have cultivated a sense of community for me. I also learned how to ask for help. And asking for help with the right people, <clears throat> it is mm -hmm. such a relationship builder. Because if that person really is part of your community, they want to support you. They are honored to support you. So when you ask for help, you say, I need help with this child one day. Or I need, can you like... I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. feeling overwhelmed. Is there something you can do? Um, when you do that, you are inviting somebody into a deeper relationship and that is how you cultivate something together. Definitely right. ask for help when you need it and trust that if that person is a part of your community truly, then they really want to be there for you. And then it kind of increases from there and develops really beautifully. And in regards to your support during during pregnancy, childbirth, and, and that postpartum period, especially those first three or four months, I think it's really important to set some of that up ahead of time because it's such an overwhelming time that sometimes you you even forget that you need help or to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And and when you're so in it, you don't even know what you need. Mm -hmm. So Going back to that list again, I in the book, I, I have this exercise where you make a list of the people you think would best support you during pregnancy, the people that would best support you in childbirth, and then the postpartum period. Because we all have different strengths. Mm -hmm. Some people might be wonderful in the pregnancy and postpartum mm -hmm. period, but maybe not so great during childbirth when it's really intense. So, so make a list of those people. Think of specifically like what you need from them. Maybe it's childcare. Maybe it's helping with food. Maybe it's cleaning the house. You know, get real specific with with what you think you'll need. You can always change it, but mm -hmm. but get clear and then go and ask them, mm -hmm. and and ask them not just for help, but for this kind of help. And can you give that to me? And and especially with the postpartum phase, you can even make a schedule. And for the first like three weeks or however many weeks, you know that. This person's coming every Monday for two hours to help me clean the house or to do some laundry or, I mean, it sounds like boring activities, but oh my God, they will transform your life. If yeah. you have people helping you yeah. with just those simple things, holding the baby so you can shower. I mean, taking you for a walk. That yeah, sounds really silly, but taking you for a walk, like 
sometimes you just need a friend that's like, right. you need to be walked, don't you? And just like come over and like put the baby in the carrier yeah. or the stroller or whatever and go for a, just a light, simple walk that is okay with your body, especially if it's postpartum, but go get some fresh air mm-hmm. if that's comfortable for you and just talk a little bit and it doesn't have to all be about the baby like remember that you are a whole being Mm -hmm. you are a whole woman and you just transitioned into motherhood and it's huge and also you can talk about some other stuff and also you can have some space to breathe and just like reconnect with woman to woman Mm -hmm. or friend to friend and have a minute to do that and with your birth supporters, make a really clear plan with them as well as much as as much as you can. As we said, birth is unknown; it's unpredictable. But I, I was just at a birth, and this couple they were going to have two two friends from another city come when when they went into labor, and and we had a meeting with all the birth supporters, the midwives, the friends, and we all talked about what our roles were going to be, what the plan was about, like what phase of labor they would come, and we got really clear on it. And then the mom just didn't have to think about it. She had the support she needed, the child, their child was taken care of. I mean, everything just worked out in a really beautiful way because they, they advocated for themselves. And the mother said, this is what I need and I'm asking for it. Mm -hmm. And it worked out. It's amazing what happens.